Look at it. Pick up one or two bits and pieces. Yeah. Must be on the spring stop. There's loads of room in there. Oh. Look, it goes up inside there. Look, <laughs> look. See, they're still bouncing that. Yeah. Loads of room. Oh dear. See this? That looks tasty, doesn't it? That's for you. Oh, that is a no. gift. You can get that label on the top there. Yeah. Well, I have screwed it to the floor to stop it jumping out on me when I go around corners. So we'll just have to pull a couple of screws out. And then you can have that indoors. Isn't he a superstar? Look at that suspension now. <laughs> right, it's full of it. Oh, just a couple of little variax. You seen this one in the front? It's a uh, little baby variant we needed. Yeah. It's a nice box though, isn't it? That's what seat belts that are for. That is nice. Try not to break these bits. These break really easy, don't they? These yeah, corners. there's something I've got to tell you about that. One of them is broken off your gift. Oh, is it? I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> the bit came with it. He, he was basically... He wouldn't let me leave without it, this transformer. Oh, and I thought, nice. I've got a man who can uh, put that to good use. That car really wasn't too bad, it looked a, a lot worse than what it was. But what a superstar he was for letting us have that transformer. We'll have some fun with that today and we're going to test it. But really I want to make a quick video about all these different transformers we use and we're going to decide what we're going to use for future experiments. But more importantly is how we get enormous arcs and things and we don't manage to burn the transformers out. That's simply because we use a device known as a ballast. Now, a ballast is normally a wire-wound device, sometimes used in series with lighting, sometimes it's used like a reactor for certain rush. But when we use a ballast on the primary, then we can stop the transformer being oversaturated. So if we oversaturate a transformer, that simply means that we're putting so much power in it that the core can't be magnetised anymore naturally then we're going to start burning coils out you know if you can't feed any more into it that magnetized current's going to come back on the coil you're feeding and burn it so we need to avoid that but it's worth noting something quite interesting which again i want to share it because you know some of you might want some astronomic power and you might only have single phase and you've got a you know a chance of having a three phase transformer and you think oh it's three phase it's no good to me well, you need to think again on that, because a three-phase transformer on single phase, in fact, can be really, really useful. And on this video, I'm going to explain how that is, simply by using one or two of the phase coils, and the output of the third coil is actually used in like a self-contained ballast. So it becomes a self-ballasted three-phase transformer, but on single phase. It sounds a bit bonkers, but hopefully I'll be able to show you it. So you probably got that. That tasty transformer that Alex brought down has been restored like new. It's got brand new terminals on it, and the bobbin end plate has been fully repaired. No trouble at all. Most of these transformers have bobbin ends that can be a bit vulnerable, so one should take care with these things. Don't pick a transformer up by its bobbin end, otherwise uh, it's likely to snap. Obviously you know that. These triple stack variable transformers can be quite uh, costly actually to try and get hold of them. You know, you can run it three phase or you can run it single phase with balancing jokes between the three. As I said, you've got this high voltage transformer. This one's a little bit more special. Uh, it's so uh, powerful, and the voltage is astronomic, it's going to make this one look like a spark on an electric cooker. But we need to get a uh, four foot bushing for it, maybe a three foot six, four foot bushing. Um, we're going to end up with about 600 kV DC with that one. But as I say, it needs a box and a bit, uh, bit of work and a bit more money, unfortunately. But these other transformers, they are useful, they've all got their uses for different things, mainly destroying things, but uh, they're very handy to have. Once you've got a variable 
transformer and uh, a stack of other transformers, you more or less get any voltage and any current that you'll ever need. Some of you might ask, why has he got a three-phase plug on his variable power supply when he's only using single phase? Well, the answer to that is, if one day I want to convert this thing to three-phase, it's just moving a couple of wires about inside and it's job done. You know, the plug's there. But if that was a single phase plug, then obviously I can't run it on free phase. But if it's free phase, there's a choice of either. This transformer has become an absolute dream. Yeah, that tripped out that 63 with ease. Yeah. We must be making that fuse sweat. I could hear it starting to rattle and then it went off. Yeah. As they do, you know. <laughs> This room's a bit of a mess. There's a couple of high voltage transformers here. This one's 11 kV pole peg, as you might know it as. The 11 kV went in here, and the low voltage come out each end of this, plus or minus 5%, normally submerged in oil. That's a project for a rainy day. Obviously, I'm going to put 220, 240 in and get 11,000 out. This one's a little bit more of a beast. This one's 30 kVA, weighs a quarter of a ton, literally, and as you can see it's three phase, and it's been converted, so it now runs on single phase. And to do that we use just two coils, we break this star point, these were all joined up at one point, all of these, and you had a phase in the top, middle, and the end. There were your three phase in, and as I say this is called the star point. So broken into that, there's a neutral on one, live on the other, so these two coils are wired up in opposition. This one's redundant, but we can still use the secondaries, which are the other side. It's quite a nice transformer, that. That won't burn out in five minutes. Right, let's turn it round. That's better. Now we can see the HT side. Each one of these coils delivers between four and 6,000 volts, almost 7,000 volts each. So there's two in series at the moment, and I might utilise that third coil. I'm not going to get full power out of it, but 20 kVA I think is in order, at least. If I can focus on this, might be interesting. So I think we could wire it up, couldn't we? I'm going to stick this one back on top of it. This is 83 kilos on its own. Good job I've got a gut to counterbalance it. <laughs> 
this is crazy working in a tiny little confined space oh well mm, we'll do it, there's transformers everywhere <laughs> That more or less concludes today's video, but I'm not going to be a spoil sport and say don't try this at home. But what I will say is if you do try this at home, do it safely, take your time, double check everything, and you'll live as long as I have, maybe a bit longer. So, you know, have fun, but be safe. Bye-bye.